Behind me are two of the hottest large format 3D printers on the market. We have the Creality K2 Plus and the brand new Bamboo Lab H2S. Both are single extruder, fully enclosed Core XY 3D printers that have multicolor support. And most importantly, they produce amazing 3D prints. But which of these two deserve your hard earned money? So today I'm gonna to be putting these two 3D printers against each other. We're gonna be printing a series of tests with different materials, not only comparing the print results, the print time, but also discussing any potential issues that I ran into along the way and by the end hopefully you'll have a better idea of which of these two 3d printers is the best fit for you now what i won't be doing is comparing the h2d as well as the prusa xl which are multi-tool head 3d printers those have a serious advantage when it comes to printing in multiple different types of materials at one time as well as a huge advantage when it comes to eliminating a lot of the waste when it comes to multi-color 3d printing thanks to their multiple tool heads and speaking of tools here's a great segue to today's video sponsor which is Fantic. Fantic is running a back to school sale right now where you can save big on two of their most popular tools, the Fantic F2 Master Cordless Rotary Tool and the Fantic S1 Pro Cordless Screwdriver. One thing I really like about Fantic is how their tools keep everything self-contained with hidden storage for all the bits and accessories, which is perfect for me since I'm constantly misplacing things. The F2 Master Rotary Tool comes with a wide variety of attachments, making it ideal for cleaning up any of your 3D prints. It runs in variable speed and it's surprisingly quiet quiet when it's in use. And the S1 Pro screwdriver is great for any 3D printer maintenance that you might have. And in my case, it's great for tightening up way too many bolts on my squeaky stool. Both of these tools have built-in lights and are easily rechargeable with their built-in USB-C ports. Make sure to check out the links in the description down below to grab the deals for these two tools where you can save 30% off the Fantic F2 Master Rotary Tool with the code Jesse f 2 m and 46% off the Fantic S1 Pro Screwdriver with the code Jesse s one p And a big thank you again to Fantic for sponsoring today's video. And before we jump into the testing, I wanted to go over some of the core features that are similar as well as different between these two machines. And right off the bat, the biggest difference between these two, in my opinion, is gonna be that build volume difference. The K2 Plus has a slight edge here over the H2 Plus, coming in at 350 by 350 by 350 versus the 340 by 320 by 340 build volume on the H2 Plus. They're fully enclosed, uh, auto bed leveling, they have cameras built into them so that you can remotely monitor your prints, it can record time lapses on them has built-in lighting. The K2 Plus does have dual side fans on the inside chambers. The H2 Plus has the venting system that they have built in depending on what material you're working in. It'll suck in air as well as export air out depending on what you're printing with and its needs are. And since both of them are fully enclosed and have active heated chambers, you can print with a wide variety of materials on either of them. And one stat that we'll be paying close attention to throughout our tests is print speeds. The K2 Plus is stating a maximum print speed of up to 600 millimeters per second and a maximum acceleration of 30,000. On the H2S, they're claiming a whopping 1,000 millimeters per second for the tool head, which is insane to me, and a maximum acceleration of 20,000. Needless to say, both of these large 3D printers can print fairly fast. With the K2 Plus, you can connect up to four of these CFS units to allow you to print in up to 16 colors. On the H2S, you can also connect up to four of their AMS units, plus an additional eight of their individual high temp AMS units to allow you to print with a maximum of 24 colors. One thing to note is that the K2 Plus does have built-in storage for storing all those time lapses and your files, so you don't need to buy any extra storage, unlike the H2S, where you are gonna have to buy an expanded USB stick so that you can actually store the time lapses and files that you're wirelessly sending to the 3D printer. Both printers also have poop shoots on the back, which means you are gonna have to print something to capture any of the purge material coming out of the printer. And we'll talk about this more. And obviously the most important for a lot of folks is what does it cost? The K2 Plus comes in at $1,299 currently, and the H2S is currently sitting at $1,499, both of these for their respective combo units. Another thing I wanted to mention is that I've had my K2 Plus for almost a year now versus just a few weeks that I've had the H2S. So obviously I've had a lot more print time with the K2 Plus than I've had with the H2S. Both of these machines also have a large selection of replacement parts that you can find online as well as wikis that help you walk through the process of swapping out those parts. Plus they both have large communities of dedicated users that can definitely help you out when running into issues with either of the machines. And before we start on the prints, one quick complaint that I have about the K2 Plus <laughs> that I don't have with the H2S is that there is a fan constantly running on this machine. If it's powered on, there is a fan running. 
This is completely silent. This is not. Uh, also, I have got some readings on here on screen just to show you the sound differences between the two when they're actively printing with the doors open versus the doors closed. When it comes to slicing up your prints, each of them have its own slicer, Bamboo Studio for the H2S and Creality Print for the K2+. Plus. It's also worth noting that you can use Orca Slicer to slice and send your files directly to the K2+, Plus, but as far as I'm aware as of today, you're not able to use Orca Slicer to send files directly to the H2S because of how Bamboo has things locked down. Oh, also both of these support offline printing, so if you don't even want to connect them to the internet, you can go that route as well. Now let's get to testing out these machines. The first thing I wanted to do was print something huge on both of these printers. So I found this derpy tiger file from K-pop Demon Hunters over on printables and I scaled it up by 275% of the original size. I ended up slicing off the bird that comes on the cat to help minimize some of the supports. And for both of these printers, for all of the tests, I'm gonna be using their pre-built out print profiles. I'm not using any custom print profiles that I've built out or anything like that. I'm just using what comes in their own respective slicers and in this case I'm going to be using their generic print profile since I'm not going to be using either of their brands filaments. I'm using the exact same brand new rolls of filaments on both of these printers and the exact same core print setting. So 0.2 layer height, 8% infill with the adaptive cubic infill pattern and I also have automatic supports enabled using tree organic supports at a 30% overhang angle with a top Z distance of 0.28. And this print again off of the K2 Plus looks fantastic. I've had nothing but great success with PLA on my K2 Plus. This took 15 hours and 39 minutes for this to print, which is slightly longer than its estimate. The H2S also looks incredible coming in at 17 hours and 33 minutes, which is one minute over their estimated time. One thing I also liked about this model is that it has a large flat bottom and you can see how the bottom surface finishes for either of these prints. Now the K2 Plus definitely has a little bit of rippling that we're seeing on that first layer as it was going down. And that's something consistently that I've seen with some of the other things that I've printed in the past. The H2S on the other hand, that's a near flawless first layer. Now I also wanted to do a nice multicolor test on these printers. So I took that bird file that we previously sliced off, got them colored up and then sent off to either machine. And both of these printers ended up running into issues when trying to print this file overnight. The K2 Plus was printing along just fine. However, the front cover fell off at some point overnight and the poop chute in the back started to clog up and needed to be freed up. This is a continuous issue that I've had with this machine anytime that I'm printing with multiple colors. And it's something that I still don't quite have a solution for. And with the H2S, the filament ended up getting stuck and needed to be freed before continuing with the print job. But we also ended up running into the exact same issue where the filament was backing up from the purge in the very back of the printer. And again, the exact same issue that I was just calling out with my initial video on the H2S. And our bird on the K2 Plus finished in 17 hours and 27 minutes. And to take a look at some of the purge material that came off of this bird, it ended up being about 11 ounces of purge material with that one ounce of purge tower. And on the H2S, it took 17 hours and 54 minutes for this to finish printing, which is about 20 minutes longer than it took for the K2 Plus. And when it comes to the purge material, this was nine ounces of purge material and one ounce of purge tower material. Now I know I wasn't gonna compare anything to the H2D, but I wanted to see how this bird would print on the H2D when it comes to the actual purging of the material. And there was no purge material that I used, but it ended up failing slightly through it because the purge tower fell over. So we've got lots of little wisping filament there on the back end. But on the plus side, it used no extra material to actually print this. And as expected, printed in a fraction of the time of the other two. So in the end, this total print job took 33 hours on the K2 Plus and 35 and a half hours on the H2S. And honestly, the results from both of them turned out amazing. Next, I wanted to try printing with some PETG. So I opened up some of this Elgu Rapid PETG and got it loaded into both of the printers. Now, I have had lots of issues trying to get PETG to print on the K2 Plus, and this was no exception. The first attempt initially was going down smoothly, but ended up pausing because it detected that the filament was not extruding properly. I went back and reprinted this at 260, which seemed to really help get this actually printing properly. This is the first time that I'm actually getting PETG to work properly here on the K2 Plus. I've had nothing but issues with getting this to print. So I'm honestly pretty happy to see that this was just printing. On the H2S, I was also able to print this exact same file. Unfortunately, because it has a slightly smaller build volume, I was not able to scale it up to the 135% that I had on the K2 Plus. So I had to rotate it ever so slightly and scale that down to 130% in order to get this to fit in the build volume of the H2S. But I had 
no issues getting this to print whatsoever. And on the K2 Plus, it took just under nine hours for this to print. You can definitely see some of the ringing or artifacts there as this was printing up on the model. On the H2S, this took just under 11 hours to print, but printed near flawlessly here. There is a textured surface on the model of this print, which is what you're probably seeing here. And if we put the two prints together, you can definitely see the ringing that was occurring on the K2 Plus. Next, I wanna try something that's relatively new to me, which is printing with ABS. So I let both of the printers heat soak for about 20 minutes with the active heated chamber enabled, as well as their bed temperature set to, I think it was 90 or 100 degrees. And on the K2 Plus, these prints took seven hours and eight minutes to finish printing. And the MF Doom mask does look pretty good and probably would smooth out nice and easily when it comes to sanding this down. However, there is some rippling that we're seeing on one edge as well as on the very ends of the print. These other prints also turned out really good on the K2 Plus and this ABS, these larger flat prints as well as these smaller detailed prints. Now on the H2S, this took 10 hours and 38 minutes to print, so a good bit longer than the K2 Plus, but there is significantly less ringing that I'm seeing on the mask. There's also a little bit of stringing or fuzziness that I'm seeing around the eyes and at the tip where we saw on the K2 Plus an issue, this turned out really clean. And our flat and detailed prints also turned out great on the H2S. Now all these flat and detailed prints also had to do with our next print, which is our TPU print that I was excited to check out on both of these machines. I have not printed with TPU on either of them, so I was excited to see how difficult it would be to actually get these up and printing since both of them require you to do some unique things. Unfortunately, on the K2 Plus, I could not get any of my filament to print properly on this machine. It was continually jamming up in that hot end gear. And after discussing this with a few users on the Creality Discord, they confirmed that there is an actual 3D printable mod that I should look at printing to better print with TPU on the K2 Plus. Now to print with TPU on the H2S, there is a special inlet that you're supposed to use and then print from the side mounted spool holder. So that's exactly what I did here. And this print turned out nothing but amazing. Honestly, I'm kind of shocked at how well this turned out. This was a brand new roll of Rapid Elegoo TPU and it printed just spectacularly. There's no stringing, no issues whatsoever with this TPU print. I'm honestly kind of shocked with how amazing this turned out. Finally, I wanted to test out again what these printers are designed for, which is just printing really large projects. So I found these multi-part hammers that don't require supports and got them sliced up and sent off to the printers. These are all scaled up by 115% of the original size since I wanted them just slightly bigger than the default scale. And on the H2S, this took 16 hours and 58 minutes for all of these to print in one go. Now, unfortunately, my K2 Plus ran into a lot of issues with this print. Um, I, I think this all really comes down to my coupler on the extruder is giving out and it's barely able to hold the PTFE tube in place. And I think this might have to do with when I was trying to print with TPU and removing the PTFE tube, like it, nothing other than the original PTFE tube will stay in place and it will barely stay in place. So I think it might've came loose and caused some of the print issues that we're seeing here. I then tried to reprint a bunch of these individually and was running into error after error. And I think it has to do potentially with that feeding issue, potentially also with the coupler. So I'm looking at having that replaced. But I was able to piecemeal print a whole bunch of these to get the whole project done. And I know I had some issues with the K2 Plus, but both of these prints turned out so good. This is such a fun project that I'm so happy that I decided to last minute throw together and try to print for this video. And again, the results I think just look incredible with both of these. Obviously, this is not the exact same file. So one was gonna print a good bit faster than the other. Some of them had more parts than the other. Some are much larger than the others. The other consideration is the actual print speeds. The K2 Plus consistently outperformed and outprinted the H2S when it came to all of these test prints. But the bigger factor is the actual print quality and the consistency of the three prints that I was able to get off of the H2S compared to the K2 Plus. All that said, there is a lot to consider when looking at either of these three printers to see if it's gonna meet your needs because they are fairly expensive. And if I had to make a choice between which of these three printers was the best between the two, 
I'm probably gonna have to go with the H2S just because of how easy it was to work with just about every material that I've tried printing with. I have had the K2 Plus a significantly longer amount of time. I've run into more issues with this because I've had it for a longer period of time than I have had with the H2S, but it's just something for you to consider. Again, depending on what you're looking to try and print. If you print a lot of PLA and looking at printing really large props, the K2 Plus is an awesome machine and definitely worth your consideration. The H2S as well is gonna allow you to print with just a huge amount of different materials and it has some incredibly refined print profiles. And hopefully this video has helped some of you out there make a choice between which of these two 3D printers might be the best option for you in the projects that you're looking to try and print. I also want to say a big thank you to Fantix for sponsoring today's video and make sure to use the links down below to get some of these tools. I also want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making crazy videos like this one here. And I can pretty confidently say that regardless Regardless of which of these two 3D printers that you go with, you'll be able to print some massive things. But let me know in the comments which of these two 3D printers you would choose if you had to and why. Hey, thanks so much for watching you all and I'll see you next time.